Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Coffees with James. I'm James, and this is my morning coffee show. How y'all doing today? I hope you're all doing swell, because today is Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day to all the veterans out there who fought our fought all the wars, who sacrificed everything so that we can remain free. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I, in fact, I'm not going to use the word appreciation because I think appreciation is get thrown around nowadays. And it's kind of annoying because when, you know, a lot of people use that word too much, it's like, oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Do you really appreciate it? I think it's like, okay, th just say thank you. It's like, why do we have to come up with new words for the same words that we've used before many of times? Um... Today I want to talk about something that I've been dealing with, and I don't want to talk about it like openly and talking about the problems with it. I want to talk about uh, addiction and why I don't think it's a disease. Because we've been getting a whole lot of this like bullshit nowadays in our life that, you know, addiction is a disease, addiction is a disease, and it's like... And I am in that camp, and I've dealt with ad addicts before, and honestly, it's I, I've noticed a pattern here. Like, when you watch, when you look at addicts and you look at why are they so addicted to this, and, I, and if you think about it, we have addiction problems in this country, too, that don't involve drugs. We, you know, we tend to say, oh, you have an addiction problem. We don't have an addiction problem. It's like, then how come nobody's tweaking out when they lose their coffee, or they, you know, give me a second... Okay, I'm back. I had a little bit too much coffee. So, speaking about coffee, we never address the, you know, we always talk about addiction being a disease and stuff like that. And honestly, I've dealt with addicts, and the truth be told, I don't think it's a disease. I think the problem with the calling it a disease is that it's, and also I've been doing some research about this too, and I, had, I have experience. My brother was addicted to opioids. My I've known some people in my, my business that were addicted and, you know, were addicts to some kind of drug and stuff like that. And I've noticed a pattern with addicts. And usually they ch usually get cleaned up for a while and they're good and all this stuff. And and eventually you, you notice something about them. It's that they act kind of like they're, they're, they're victims all the time. Like, there's a victim mentality when it comes to an addict. And... The fact that, you know, it's, I, the reason why we don't call it diseases is because it's, it's, there's no neurological, you know, evidence for that. You can say, oh, well, there's, you know, people are just are craving, it's like, no, it's the way I see it, 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 in reality, it's not about the craving of it, it's a filling up an, uh, filling up a void. Either it could be, you know, porn addiction, which, you know, you know I don't want to say I have problems with it, but I've, you know, you know, better yet. Pot addiction. I think pot and porn addiction go hand in hand because pot makes you a little bit more relaxed. It makes you a little bit more frisky. It does make people frisky, but you know we're not allowed to talk about that because oh marijuana. Now marijuana is not as worse as you know alcohol. I you're you're absolutely right, but there are like then why don't we talk about it? Why don't we do some research about it? You know it's you know nobody ever wants to address you know people with pot problems it's alcohol that's the problem it's like yeah alcohol is a problem too but pot can be a problem too it's like you know it's hard and again if you're again it's not about how much you're it's not a the substance that is at fault it's how much you're doing and granted should you be smoking crack absolutely not because shit that's made in a lab is much more dangerous than shit that's been grown out in the wild it's like but the problem is that we've become so we're, we're trying to fill a void. Now, that's what really addiction is. You're trying to fill a void, an emptiness in your soul. Either it could be through shopping, it could be either through, like, buying something or, you know, filling it with, you know, being busy all the time. You're just, you're trying to fill something or you, you lack something. It's like, especially with porn addiction, it's a lack of confidence. Oh, you're not worthy to have a girlfriend. You're not worthy to be, you know, it's, you know, why do you think most young men nowadays just resort to porn and video? Which, by the way, can we not shit on gamers anymore or video games? That's all you go. You're going into video games. Oh, that's the problem. It's like, okay, guy, conservatives, it's not the video game's fault. Okay. It's like going to movies. People go, you know, back in the day, back in the Depression, people used to go to movies constantly. They used to spend days, excuse me, a day at the movies, you know, watching the same thing. Or other movies, to be exact. Because reality sucks. And also, again, you want to talk about an oppressed group? group? Gamers are more of an oppressed group than, say, anybody else out there. Because we are always labeled as some violent, homophobic, womanized, every demonic thing, and also living in your parents' basement. Which was funny, because I don't live in my parents' basement or attic anymore. I live in my old room, because life had kicked me into the fucking, kicked me into the teeth multiple times. Excuse my language. 
This is the only F-bomb you're getting. But it's the same crap that you keep, you know, we keep hearing about addiction. It's a disease. It is, it's not a disease. It's more of a, it, it's more of, in a sense, an emptiness and a void. And I keep, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's the truth. And I think people need to realize this. And also, this kind of guilt that goes with the guilt and shaming. Oh, how dare you? Oh, well, wagging your finger from the older generations. And that includes Gen X. I mean, like, they had their own addiction problems, too. And millennia. Everybody has their own addiction problems. And I know I'm going to get into the generational gap thing here. But to be honest with you, it's kind of, it's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying dealing with people who, you know, well, they want you to be clean but they also want you to, you know, concentrate here. Come on now. It's like, no. It's like you, you created a, we created a problem too about that. It's like, there's some, it's weird because you have some people who can control their substance abuse problem and be functioning, but then there's other people who just are totally, you know, screwball. And I think the people who are screwball have some other issues going on. And we talk about it, like, we, we do the armchair analysis, which, you know, I'm doing it too. I got a new chair, which is comfortable. It's a director's chair, which, honestly, it's much better. But we do this thing where it's like, you know, oh, why can't you sober up? Maybe it's because they feel useless. They feel like they're not worthy of anything, and so they hide it, and they try to, like, make themselves, like, you know, they try to kill that pain of being like, oh, I'm not worthy of anything. What you are. What you are. You are worthy of being sober. You are worthy of being happy. You're worthy of telling people to shut the fuck up, too, by the way, which, is gonna, which I'm going to be talking about in a second. You're worthy because, you know, you are worthy, but you got to make yourself worthy. you got to go out there and do the work. you got to go out there and exercise. you got to go out there and find art, which nobody ever talks about because everybody's like, oh, well, you got to just do it. You, you just got to work and forget about it. No, go get art. I don't care if you're doing YouTube. I don't care if you're doing drawings, this or that, or, you know, whatever your art is, do it. Do your art. Go outside. And I know it's the old saying, go outside and touch grass. Yeah, okay, fine. You know, if you're playing video games all day, it's like, man, maybe it's time to take a break and go outside. Maybe you shouldn't be addicted to your phone. We need to bring back MP3 players. That's all I'm going to say about that. MP3 players need to come make a comeback, along with cassette players and maybe CD players. I'm honestly not a big fan of the CD players because try running with a CD player and it always kind of like skips because CDs were never meant to be portable. You just put them in and that's the end of that. In, in, does that am I wrong about that? To the older generation... Is, was that a problem with you when you had a CD player? It always, like, when you're trying to run or move or do things, it would usually skip or kind of mess up a little bit. I always had that problem. Um, but for the, and by the way, CD, portable CD players were amazing. That's that's futuristic technology right there. And it's like, oh, now you get MP3 players. Like, eh. But, you know, it's... You know, it, it's that whole thing about being, like... You know, it's about worthiness. You know, that, that's why Thor is so popular as a Marvel superhero. It's not in the sense of, oh, he's a god amongst men. He's also, a like, he's learning what it means to be human. It's like, yes, we all feel like we're not worthy of the hammer. We're not worthy of Excalibur. But you are worthy of that. But you have to make yourself worthy. Be like, no, I am worthy. I don't need to be destroying myself with drugs or alcohol anymore. And again, especially with marijuana. Which, honestly, nobody ever wants to talk about this. When it comes to alcohol and the other hard drugs, it's including cigarettes it's, oh, it's destructive and then all this stuff but when you get to marijuana it's like ah i smoke pot too it's like, everybody does it the same thing with pornography yeah, everybody does it it's like then why don't we talk about that why aren't we allowed and then if you do talk about it in a negative light they usually label you as a conservative or over christian or some nonsensical bullshit my problem with that in that sense it's that maybe it's because it's you know if it's starting to affect your life Maybe it's time to reevaluate the situation at hand with it. It's, you know, if you're smoking so much pot, maybe, just maybe, there's a problem. If you're waking and baking all day, every, every day, you know, every day you're waking and baking, you're going to be absolutely useless. You know, there's something wrong there. If somebody did that with alcohol, you could call that a problem. But when it comes to marijuana, it's perfectly okay. Marijuana gets a free pass on everything. And including porn, which, honestly, yes, porn is disgusting. Let's be honest about that. Watching two people uh, have intercourse is, you know, unhealthy. It's unhealthy to watch. Sure, you can watch it once in a while just to be like, all right, see what it looks like. 
But honestly, we, we kind of forgot that maybe we should watch something wholesome. Maybe we should watch something that isn't, you know, degrading. Or we should watch something that isn't, you know, you know, isn't nihilistic or deconstructed. We want to watch something that's like, like a, you know, like a good family meal. Like a good home cook. Oh, wow, this is really, it feels good to watch that. When you're watching something and it hits a wholesome part, it hits this part. But again, I'm gonna, I'm going off topic here. It's, again, and also the fact that it's speaking about people who keep saying that marijuana is not good, you know, that there's nothing wrong with that. And, oh, well, it's just moderation, moderation. Moderation is fine, but, you know, you have to say, you know, enough is enough. When, it, when it's starting to affect your life and it's, when it's time to say enough, say enough. Just say no. Just say no. Nancy Reagan, you know, a lot of people pick on the Reagans for the whole war on drug shit and the anti-drug messaging and all that stuff. You know, marijuana is possibly the most dangerous. They over, they over blew the whole, you know, marijuana situation. They over blew that situation with marijuana, calling it the devil's lettuce and evil. It's, it's dangerous. It's evil. Because they, they accuse, it's the gateway drug thing. It's, you know, once you smart smoking marijuana, next it's heroin and it's hard drugs. And no, that's a lie. Marijuana is, does not lead to that. It doesn't lead to harder drugs. Yeah, well, you know what? You do want to experiment with m mushrooms or something like that. Or maybe, I, you know, and I have tried different, dr uh, you know, substances too. I have tried different drugs as well. I tried cocaine once, and it was not that... It wasn't great, folks. It wasn't like, oh, uh, you had a bad experience. No, I had no experience. It was like, this is it? Fuck off. It's like, Tony Montana... Was, the, Scarface was a lie. He was doing sugar. That's the real That's the real substance abuse right there. Sugar. You know, booger sugar. <laughs> Why do you think they call it booger sugar? Because it really was sugar. Oh, God, I need sugar. Look at, look at every boomer. Look at J Joe Biden. He's eating ice cream constantly. It, sugar a very abu is a very dangerous substance, especially refined sugar. I'm not saying all sugar is bad, but refined sugar is like the most thing. Look at every boomer out there, and I know I'm picking on the boomers, but these are the people we're going to be talking about in just a moment. And I know I'm picking on Joe Biden here. Yo, you're picking on Joe Biden. What are you, conservative? Uh, on paper, I am. I'm a Republican on paper. But when it comes to my own practice, I'm more libertarian than, say, Republican. I chose a part. I chose that party because they were more, because uh, kind of, I was in disillusion with that, you know, with you know either party. I, I know one party's bad. They're all fucking gay. Let's be honest about this. And I know I shouldn't be using the word gay. Whoops. Um, I know YouTube's going to be censoring me, but they're and they're, well, they're all happy. Let me put it that way. They're all happy people. They're all happy living in their own lives. That's what I meant when I meant gay. Um, oh come on, I'm a. I would grew up in the 2000s. You can handle... I, at least I didn't say homosexual. Okay, oh, they're homosexual. It's like, get over yourself. At least I didn't call him a cigarette or a meatball. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Um, no, it's... Again, when, when we think about that generation of like... You know, I'm going to talk about the boomers here. Because we all grew... We were all raised by them. We were all raised by Generation X. And... There's this thing that when you do a substance abuse or you failures or this or that, they always like to say, hey, take responsibility, take responsibility, take responsibility. And, you know, it's your, it's your fault, you know, taking that, resp uh, you know, my fault, my fault, my fault. And then you get, you know, I'm bawling, I don't give a shit. And you know what, that's another thing why I'm giving up pot. It's, you know, this, this here. You know, it's my. It, it also affects you physically. It's like you know, there's a point where you just gotta say no. This is not good for you. This is this is done. We're done with here. And but back to the, the whole taking blame things. It's okay to take blame. It's okay to take responsibility and accountability for your own actions. And yes, it is your fault. But we can move on. But the older generation doesn't seem to want to do that. Yeah, tell me about this. You got generations that people of, of, of people who just keep bringing up the past. Every and then my friends have done this. My parents have done this. People have done this to other people too. They always bring up the past to remind you of your failures. To just say, "Oh, remember this? You did this. You did this. You did this. Oh, the past, the past. Oh, you did this. 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 You're never gonna leave." It's like they keep putting that chain around your ankle, and it's like, can we move the fuck on? Seriously, can we move the fuck on? Because remember the past. I'm, I'm just, here, here are the facts. You're never going to change. You're never going to change. I've changed. I've quit doing the things I've did. I, I'm no longer eating. You know, here's the thing. I'm, I'm no, minus the whole smoking marijuana. I don't do that anymore. I'm done. I'm done. It may be indefinitely. You know, I, I'll make it indefinitely. 
I'm done looking, I'm done looking at shit I shouldn't be looking at. You know, I'm, I'm done... I'm done eating processed shit. I, I'm on the carnivore diet with a little bit of carrots there and a little bit of honey there. And yes, milk, anything from an animal based. I'm sorry, but vegetables are not good for you, folks. People, I'm, you know, all these dietitians, which by the way, another thing I want to shit on the conservatives about. Hey, do your fucking research on diets and food. We've been lied to about our food, but I'll get into that in another, you know, video. And we're being poisoned, by the way. So, Steven Crowder, shut the fuck up. Do your fucking research. Change my mind. Um, vegetables are not good for you. Change my mind. Uh, but the problem I see here with, with addiction, it's always they bring up the past. Hey, let somebody, let them be free of that. Hey, maybe... Take some responsibility yourself. You raised us. You raised these kids. Raised this entire generation and the generation after that to, to the think it was just all our fault. That we did nothing wrong. We couldn't be able to do this. We couldn't be able to do this. We did everything. We're trying to do everything. Oh, we had to become this. We had to become that. We're trying to fit. Oh, we, your generation. We, so everything we're trying to do is making these older generations happy. Hey, shut the fuck up and maybe just take a responsibility for it. Oh, it's not my fault. No, but you did raise us. I'm not going to get put entire blame on you and I'm not going to harp on it. But at least, just say, at least, okay, I'm going to take a little responsibility here. I'm going to take some faults here. You know, and stop putting the entire blame on that. I'm throwing the cross off and giving you a little bit of that cross. I'm taking... I'm going to snap that cross and give you some because you need to take responsibility for that. And I know every... Some boomers are going to be looking at this. Some, you know, those baby boomers are going to look at me. Or Gen X, by the way, you're responsible too for this shit. You know, I'm going to say to you, hey, you know what? Fuck off. It's all serious. Just leave me alone. Stop. You know, I had a friend. You know, one of our employees. You know, good guy. You know, I worked with this guy. Drove him around, which. You know, and I noticed that his dad was kind of an asshole to him. Honestly, oh, he's a fucking idiot. This asshole, this idiot, this moron, this stupid, stu this asshole, you jerk, you stupid. And it's like, why did you have a fucking child in the first place when you keep make beating him down? You bring up the past. Maybe you're the asshole. Maybe you're the goddamn responsible one that keeps beating him down, that he keeps relapsing. Most of these generation of kids keep relapsing because you keep beating them down. You don't. Hey, here's an idea. How about you just fucking die yourself? And I know that was a little harsh, I'm sorry. But it's just, it, gave, it even frustrates me. It's like, hey, guess what? Maybe the, the, the fact that most of these kids end up dead is the fact that you keep beating them down. And the fact that they can't escape from your abuse, your emotional abuse, your physical abuse. Hey, shut the fuck up. Okay? I don't care about your fucking, what your grand, your, what your dad did, or what his dad did, and how you lived, and how you running your life, and, and you know, how you did your life. You know, the quote, you know, Ghost of Tsushima, how you lived your life was not my choice, and your death is not my fault. And I, I'm so tired of this. And this generation of people who keep bringing up the past, who keep beating you down, hey, tell them the fuck off. Tell them, hey, I'm going to keep trying my best to recover. Not even recover. In fact, don't even mention the words recovering or being, just saying, hey, going straight. Finally giving up on shit and go, living your life. Live your life, goddammit, but don't harp, but I'm gonna tell this too, don't harp on the bullshit. Don't harp on, you know, blaming them, it's like, oh, you're falling again, and keep beating it, because you're gonna do the same thing your parents did. Don't be like, be like, hey, fuck you, you're also, you also had some responsibilities, and drop it. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm gonna keep that, leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it at that. You know, don't ask me for shit, don't, don't keep talking down to me, if you do, we're gonna have some words, I'm gonna throw hands at you. It's, you know, it's, again, you know, and it's like, you know, you want to keep bringing up the past. Hey, okay, fine. How many times have I ever, you know, driven you around? Or how many times have you fucking, you know, tell me I was worthless and every time I did so, making me feel like a piece of shit, I've relapsed because I could never live up to your standards. Oh, I am an idiot? Hey, I'm not the one who couldn't get an abortion or afford one. Because you know what? You raised me, but yet you kind of failed. Hey, maybe you're the fucking moron. I do have a funny story about that one employee, though. When I went up to pick him up, nobody told me that 
he died. So I went up to where he was living. It was pretty far. I drove up there, and it turned out he died. And his girlfriend told me that. And I was like, what the fuck? And you know what? Is it, when it, it's funny, though, because the parents didn't... This is how you know your, your parents absolutely suck. When your girlfriend tells the... When, when your girlfriend tells you... Excuse me. It was his girlfriend who told me that he died. And I was like, so the parents don't give a shit. So, you know, we don't... Talk, you know, talking about responsibility here. Hey, guess what? Maybe the parents are shitty. Maybe you just have a shitty environment. Maybe it's not all your fault. And again, I'm going back on this, not blaming the parents here. Maybe it's your shitty environment as well. Maybe it's the fact you live in a very bad neighborhood or a very bad area. Hey, it may look nice on the outside, but on the inside, it's probably just disgusting. It's probably just like a rancid hole. You know what I mean? Like a rancid, like, it's just a toxic place to live around. Maybe it's your, also your friends too. Hey, I have friends who just abandoned me who just said, who just used me for fun and games and fun and games, but when we were trying to do projects and filming and stuff like that, especially this one, which I'm not going to mention his name, but he would, he just wanted to have fun. He was instigating all the time. He was joking around, having fun. He used me as his fun little toy. Like, I was his designated friend, you know, along with his other, my other friend who basically decided to say, hey, fuck you too. Not in that sense, but he was kind of lazy. Let's be honest about that. And... It, it, it just bugs the crap out of me. Just knowing that maybe, hey, maybe it's your environment and your friends. Maybe it's not just all your fault. Maybe it's your environment as well. Maybe it's the fact that maybe your parents were just absolutely dog shit assholes. Or were just absolute shitty people. Maybe it's your friends who never were really good friends to begin with. You were probably the best, get, you know, the most fiercest friend, but the rest of them just saw, you know, loyalty as a one-way street. Loyalty to you, but none for me. It's like, fuck you. And I know who my, you know, and failure is a great thing, too. Donald, like, I'm going to mention the Donald because I already mentioned Joe Biden. Donald Trump said this quote, too. You know, failure has taught me that who it can show you who your real friends are when you're down on your luck. And I have saw who my real friends were. Pam, thank you. Glenn, thank you. I'm going to mention your names big time on that one. You know, Seth, Lindsay, you're real motherfuckers right there. And I'm hoping, <laughs> trust me, I, I have to speak slowly because I already offended uh, a certain community and stuff like that. But it's, th it's just that nonsense of just, oh, keep blaming yourself. No, don't always put the blame on yourself constantly. If you want to heal, just remember this. Yes, I'll take accountability for the things that I did. But you know what? Remember... I remember, and I'm going to save that quote later on, and now I'm remembering. But remember, it's not always your entire fault. And I'm not saying you should just pass the blame on somebody else and take no accountability. What I'm saying here is that maybe not all of it's your fault. Maybe not everything is your fault. Maybe it's other people as well. And also, just think about that. Like, sit, get away from everybody. T shut off your phone. Get away from everybody. And think. And get sober, too, while you're doing it. Just finally quit whatever substance you're on, whatever you're watching, whatever you're doing. Get out of the house. Go out into the woods. Hide. Hide. Run away. Hide. Vanish. And then reflect on who's... You know, you can take the responsibility for your shit. But also, think about all the other things you've done for other people. Think about all the favors you've done for other people. I can't say, do me a favor. Do do me this favor. It's like, no, why should I do you this favor? And it's for simple shit. And it's for simple things. A favor is that, okay, I'm doing this, but you got to return that favor. You have to return that favor. You know, how about just, hey, could you do this for me? Hey, I need you to get that for me. Hey, uh, could you pass that? It's, you know, uh, James, I need you to do something of that nature. It's like something of that nature, but you don't, again, it's, I'm sorry, that's our own personal thing. I hate when people say that or call me bud. Hey, buddy, pal. It's like, cond it's just a like condescending word. Just call me by my name. It's not hard. Hey, James, that's it. I'm not your buddy or your pal. That's like, why? It's like, okay, so you don't want to call me by my name because I've had any respect? Jay is fine, but no. Again, I think that's most of the most condescending language out there. It's like, buddy or pal. It's like, do you think I'm retarded? It's like, my my parents do think I'm retarded, which honestly, it's it, it's such a condescending thing. It's like, I, well, I think they're kind of stupid too, so, you know. Never, never get in business with your family because, uh... 
you you real you really do see how, who they really are when money and business is involved, and again, this is another reason why I'm the way I am or why I'm quitting the things I'm quitting. It's because I could never live. I'm always always scared of being you know screaming loud noises and shit like that. Maybe it's because I was maybe I was autistic, and for those who are autistic, that's sensory overload. It's not because it's a loud angry noise. It's oh you're associating angry noise with your fault and it's like hey shut the fuck up okay go ahead scream louder you know because i know you're not going to take a swing at me and if you do i'm hitting you back so think about that for a second folks but again i want to talk about what was i talking about oh yeah and i want to finish up by saying this think about a big uh barrel of chicken soup the most wholesome soup out there or better yet not a barrel who the why would you have a barrel of chicken soup or a better yet a can of chicken soup you take that can and you take a little bit of raw sewage and you put a little raw sewage in the chicken soup it's going to be destroyed absolutely okay and that's not going to be you know throw that out but now you do the reverse you have a can of raw sewage and you take a little chicken soup you throw it in there it's still going to be raw sewage so in a sense you're, you, need, you can't change toxic people. You can change yourself, and you can't let any toxicity get around there, and you can't change anybody else's toxicity. Because usually people, you know, I do exercise and stuff like that, and people usually ask me for fitness and, you know, advice, and I do give it to them, and then they, like, give me that, ah, I'm not going to do that. It's like, because they're looking for an easy answer, and you didn't give them the easy answer. You didn't give them what they wanted to hear, and I say, no, never do that again. Never do that. Don't ever give advice that people are going to reject. Just say, no, no, I'm not going to give you any advice because you're not going to change. You don't want to change. You don't have the drive to change because you're looking for an easy answer. Everybody looks for that easy answer, too, which I'll, I don't want to go any further about that. I'll, I'll talk about that real quick. Everybody wants an easy answer, and there's no real easy answer out there. Usually, you got to do your own research. you got to look into the facts. you got to look into what is good and what is not good, what exercises are good, and especially when this comes to addiction as well. you got to look what works and what doesn't work, and you got to look at like everything about it. It's like... Hey, and you know what? There's no easy... You gotta explain that. And again, one thing does not mean one thing. You know, like with the carnivore diet, meat does not equal protein. Meat equals protein, creatine, vitamin B, vitamin... All sorts of vitamins, ink, zinc, ink. Ink, there's ink. Yeah, I was eating squid. Um, there's, you know, zinc, there's magnesium. There's a lot more. If you look and do your goddamn research, there's more to this than just... X, Y, and Z. There's a lot more. There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X. You know, all the alphabet is in there. And you, we, you, we have to realize that. There is no easy answer, but you know what? That's the whole point about addiction. It's never just one thing. It's, it's multiple of things. But again, I'm going to say that one more time. Don't harp on it. Work on yourself. And sometimes you gotta tell people to go fuck themselves. Even if it is your own family, tell them to go fuck themselves because they don't want you to change. They want you to stay the same. They want this idea of just, okay, this I can identify it because it's familiar. I don't have it being changed. I'm not worried about being changed and it makes me feel like a piece of shit. It makes me feel degraded. Fuck them. Because they don't want to feel, they want, don't want to feel like lesser. Fine, fuck you. You chose your path. I'm choosing mine. So, yeah. That's all I gotta say. Thank you for watching. I know I should be working on the theory for that, um, but right now I just wanted to get a video out there because I've done. Used to do a show on Instagram called Morning Coffee with James, and no, speaking of which, uh, and it used to be a fun show. It used to be a great show, and now Instagram decided, yeah, no more 15-minute videos for you. Fuck you. Um, so right now I'm doing 30 minute videos on YouTube, so I hope you like it. Um, yeah, so welcome to Morning Coffee with James. I'm James and this is my Morning Coffee Show. Thank you for listening.